And this is Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. We're covering Army hockey today, getting start with the season as the weather gets a little cooler. Um, uh, hockey is going to be uh, starting up very soon. And we have a chance to talk with the head coach of Army hockey, and that is Brian Riley. Coach, how are you today? Doing great, Ken. Uh, obviously, coming in the office today, I saw some snowflakes. So, you know what? I, I, I guess this is a good time for you and I to be talking and obviously talking about hockey. Absolutely. Now, last time uh, you and I chatted was uh, um, after senior night. You had a, a spectacular senior night for your, for your uh, seniors. And then uh, the Atlantic hockey uh, playoffs uh, were canceled in the uh, middle of the uh, rounds. And... Uh, Ended the season. Uh, just tell us a little bit about the about uh, the end of your season. I know graduation day must have been a big day for you and and your seniors. Yeah, I mean, obviously, how the season ended was nothing that any of us could have prepared for. I mean, we were so excited going into the playoffs. Obviously, earning a bye in in the first round and. And finally, having all of our seniors, it, it would have been the first time I, I think all of our seniors um, would have been healthy enough to play. And so uh, we felt really good about our team going into our series with Niagara. Uh, but then obviously things changed and um, it, it was something that, um, especially for our seniors, for our firsties, you know, to to have their hockey careers end like that was really, really gut-wrenching. Um, but I think what it's done is it's, um, I think we've all heard, like, sometimes you don't appreciate something until it's gone. And so as a result of what happened um, last year, you know, we've been here practicing for, I don't know, 10, 11 weeks. And the mental toughness of our guys, uh, you know, the positive mindset that they've had coming up to the rink every day has been uh, amazing. And I think that goes back to, you know, kind of how the rug was pulled out from underneath them last year with, with the season. So, um, yeah, it, it's like I said, you don't really have a playbook for, for how things ended last year, but um, certainly excited to be where we are now. And uh, our, our cadets are really, really excited. Hey, I just got to ask you about graduation day. That was a very proud day for everybody at West yeah, Point. Yeah. Tremendous yeah. amount of work that went into it. Oh, you know what? Um, I can't believe uh, what an amazing job that uh, our soup, Lieutenant General Williams, did in 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 making that all happen. Um, I was fortunate to be on a lot of these calls and, and um, to listen to uh, the leadership team here at West Point and the plan that they had and, and um, just the. Uh, amount of work that went on behind the scenes to to pull that off. I mean, um, I was just really, really proud to, um, well, I was thankful that our players got to experience that um, graduation and, and on the plane, um, but really, really uh, amazing job done from everybody here at West Point, obviously starting with the leadership team and, and starting with the soup. Um, I don't think we could have asked to have better leadership um, than to have the suit because the experiences that he's had uh, at other places, I think, has set him up to be the leader that, that we need uh, during this pandemic. Certainly, uh, General Williams served in Africa during the Ebola crisis. I happened to be privileged to listen in on uh, the talk he gave to the Board of Visitors on uh, all the preparations they studied the uh, the uh, uh, virus uh, response from uh, the bases in Korea and Italy and and all around the country and it was very very impressive the plan that they put together actually a model for universities around the country. A uh, coach, you've had the yeah. You, yeah. Uh, so Ken, like 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 what, what I was going to say as a result of being on a lot of those calls and and, and listening to the planning, um, I learned two things. One, there's a lot of smart people here at West Point, and two. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of them, right? Like, like, like the, the, the again, like, um, just so, so impressed with, with, with uh, everybody here at West Point, the officers, and, and, and again, all the planning. Uh, and, and like you said, I think it's a model for um, all schools throughout the country. 
Well, Coach, you're a PhD in ice hockey and contribute so much to the sport, which, uh, and sports is part of the training at West Point, everybody says, so you're you're a big part of it and, and so well respected within the profession of, of uh, NCAA ice hockey. Coach, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, I, I read Atlantic Hockey had to revamp their schedule and they've kind of created Eastern and Western divisions and they kind of have Air Force doing something uh, unique. Tell us a little bit about the schedule change and what it's going to look like. Well, I, I think obviously uh, with with this situation that, that we're in, you had to kind of think outside the box, right? And, um, you know, from a, just from a financial standpoint, from a budget standpoint, factoring in that. Uh, so we came up with an idea of East-West pods. Um, meaning that we are just going to play the other four Eastern teams five times. So um, that means we are just going up and back. So when we go to Bentley on a Friday night, we'll drive to Boston. We'll drive back after the game. No hotel. They'll come here Saturday. Uh, so uh, you won't have a lot of interaction with anyone outside of your team, you know, just kind of getting off the bus, go into the rink, play, come home. So. That's 20 games there. Every team in the Eastern pod, and, and the West will do the same, the, the same. Air Force will travel around and play everybody twice. And then we brought in LIU. LIU's uh, a new team. Actually, my nephew, Brett, um, is the coach there. And I, he's put together, brought in a lot of uh, D1 transfers that are looking for, you know, I guess a new opportunity. and. By bringing them in, that just kind of was able to balance off our schedule. So now we will have 24 league games. And if you would have told me, Ken, um, two months ago that you're going to have an opportunity to play 24 league games, like I, I would have signed up for 10. I would have signed up for eight, you know. But um, now hopefully we'll be able to get those 24 league games in. A lot of things still yet to be determined. You know, you got to kind of go on a daily, on, on a weekly basis. But I think how we have it set up this year, Atlantic hockey. And then at the end, um, we will have a playoff format and, and crown a league champion. Where will LIU play its uh, home games? So LIU is going to play their home games in the Islanders uh, practice facility down on uh, Long Island. So uh, a nice facility. Um, we're actually going to open the season with them. Um, and that is kind of like a non-league game. And then we'll play them twice at the end of the year. The only thing with LIU, you are playing them in a, in a league schedule, but those games will not count in the standing. So that's the only different thing. But it's actually, I think it was great for our league to do that because here you have a new team coming into college hockey and kind of giving them an opportunity to have a schedule, to, to have games. I don't think if, if we didn't open the door for them to, to, to come in and, and play within our league this year, they would have been in trouble trying to find games. So. Uh, I think it's a, a good move on our league's part, but because it's good for college hockey. Absolutely. There's always been a need to find a Division I program in New York City. And uh, yeah. an LIU offers that potential to uh, bring a sense. I mean, we know what it's like in Boston or Minneapolis or in other parts of the country, but uh, to bring yeah. a Division I team into New York City creates a lot of exposure for college hockey, I would think. For sure, because, I mean, that's that's a great hockey area uh, down in Long Island, and I mean from from a recruiting standpoint. So I think an opportunity for kids down on the island to maybe have a dream of of, of playing kind of in their own backyard. Uh, someday I think you'll see a roster of LIU that that will have a lot of uh, local kids, uh, Long Island kids, New York City kids, you know, kids Westchester. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's, I, I think it's great for college hockey. Anytime you can add a program, but certainly add a program, you know, down in the New York City area, the met metropolitan area, uh, I think it's great for college hockey. And coach, maybe, uh, 
We can talk a little bit about your roster for the year. I guess it all starts with your senior goaltender, Trevin Kozlowski from Los Angeles. Had a great season for you last year. How is he doing? And, and maybe take us through uh, your roster a bit. Sure. So, I, I mean, first of all, we lost a great senior class, right? Um, you know, the guys like, well, you don't replace guys like that. But at, at the same time, I think you're – your program's in a good spot when every year you're graduating talented players, and and we're in that cycle now. Um, that was a that was a very good class, and um, but we really like the guys coming back. Obviously, like you said, for us it starts in goal with Trevin, um, and then our decor. Uh, I think that's kind of the strength of our team because the experience. When you talk about uh, Zimmy and Berkey and Fleck, you have three, uh, three seniors that have played a lot of minutes. And, um, and then last year, we, we had some young guys that, that played uh, big minutes on the blue line. So again, I think our, our strength is in the experience of our decor. And then up front, um, you know, we're gonna need people like, uh, um, Krugs, like Booty, like Velos, Billick, um, the experienced guys to to make a step, right? And 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 hides. Uh, and then I really like this freshman class. Like uh, we have some talented, we have some talented freshmen. And uh, key word being freshman plebes, right? Like it, it um, little bit of a roller coaster ride sometimes with, with that group you know, trying to find that consistency line because they're just trying to figure out things here at West Point and, and going through the everyday grind of being a plea. But man, oh man, like, like, like watching them on the ice, uh, I, think, I think the future looks bright with, uh, with some of these guys. And since you've had uh, the cadets back uh, since uh, June, uh, and uh, you mentioned you've had the ice down, uh, that's uh, provided some skating time for the team uh, through the summer, which is a standard almost everywhere else, but sometimes is limited at West Point yeah. because of military training. Yeah, so you, you know what? We did have the ice down, but because of the pandemic and during that time, like everybody was kind of staying, like the cadets were in their bubble down below. so. We were really able to, um, once everybody got back and, and started, like we're here for reorgy week, then we had an extensive um, return to play policy put together by administrators, um, our trainers, doctors, coaching staff. So it was, a, a, like I said, extensive program that, that we followed and, um, Every couple of weeks, we went into another phase, but uh, I mean, knock on wood, it's, it's, it's worked for us and allowed us to, like I said, be, be in a situation where we've been on the ice now probably for 11 weeks, I think. And, and our guys, the cadets, I mean, real credit to them. Like I said, the mental toughness that they've showed, this is the longest preseason ever. Um, but they have come up every day with the with positive attitude and, and just thankful to have an opportunity to get on the ice. Well, look forward. Uh, you have your opener uh, against LIU, Long Island University, on November 14th and, uh, and uh, set a, a full Atlantic hockey uh, schedule for your Eastern pod. It's going to be uh, good to follow. And, uh, you know, I, I got to mention, uh, you've got some uh, big fans at the top of the U.S. Army uh, between uh, General Milley, who is uh, a big fan. And didn't I see General McConville at one of your practices? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we, we've been very fortunate. So General Milley is a family friend. My dad actually tried to recruit him here to West Point. He wound up going to Princeton. Um, General McConville is a mass guy, uh, hockey in his blood. Um, Ryan McCarthy, the Secretary of the Army, another big hockey guy. So, and okay. I think they're all, uh, hopefully at some point, we'll see them here. But obviously, it's great to have those guys um, in your corner. And we look forward to seeing them every time that they come to West Point. Well, they seem to schedule their visits around a hockey game. So, uh, I'm sure they, they enjoy it and respect uh, the work you do with uh, with the program. And uh 
Brian uh, Riley, great to see you. Uh, great to have a few minutes. We'll look forward to catching up with you again as uh, we get into the season. And really just best wishes to you and your team and program from everybody at the American Legion. Hey, Ken, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and keep our fingers crossed that, that hopefully coming up here soon that we'll be able to see you at one of our games and we'll be able to talk after an Army win. Absolutely. Look forward to that. And uh, great. You have a good, good day today. Coach Brian Riley, head coach of Army Ice Hockey. This is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio from White Plains, New York. We're part of Squadron 135 based in White Plains, uh, New York. Have a great day, everybody.